Imagine one day there's a knock on your door, and outside stands two caseworkers from the social services. They tell you that, according to their predictive algorithm, what they also call their AI system, your child is at high risk of mistreatment. As a consequence, your family will be given special support from the social services to prevent that such mistreatment will occur. When you ask why, why my family, why my child, they tell you that the algorithm has been trained to predict new cases of mistreatment by finding statistical patterns in past cases. A combination of features such as zip code. Dental records and income records mean that your family and your child fit the profile. In fact, the algorithm has been tested to be correct in 95% of cases. Do you think this sounds like a good idea? Yes. No. When I first heard about this, I certainly felt a strong urge to say, "No way." And I do suspect that many of you do too. However, working as a philosopher on the ethics of using AI systems, I also consider the cases that we might make for saying, "Let's do it. Let's use these systems." And I think we face what I have called the AI dilemma. On the one hand, we can use these systems to prevent serious harms to people and society. On the other hand, using these systems seem to threaten important values such as privacy and autonomy. But to begin with, I'll just briefly talk a little bit about what it means to be in a dilemma. Genuine dilemmas cannot be escaped. That's why we speak of dilemmas as having horns, metaphorically. As soon as you try to avoid one horn, you will be pierced by the other. Or to paraphrase the British philosopher Bernard Williams, whatever you do when you face a dilemma, there will always be a leftover of regret. So now that we can't escape the AI dilemma, we will have to find a way to live with it. So let's consider the first horn of the dilemma. Why think we should use these AI systems to make important decisions about people instead of good old-fashioned human professionals? I think one of the most important reasons is that we want important decisions about people to be made on the best possible basis, and there is a wealth of knowledge to be found in the huge amounts of data that the public authorities collect about us. It is virtually a goldmine of information. So there is a question about how we best extract this information to improve decision making. Well, arguably not by sticking to humans. Consider a simple task such as multiplying two numbers. I have a son who just started school this summer, and sometimes he will come over and ask me. Hey, Dad, what's two times two? I'll say four. Then he'll go on. Four times four. I'll say sixteen. And then he'll say three hundred and thirty-five times nine hundred and forty-six. <laughs> I'll sort of look at him and say, "I'll need pen and paper to do this." And he gets sort of annoyed and says, "Can't you just say it?" Well, I have to tell him, you know, dads get slow when things get complex. <laughs> Mothers do too, by the way. <laughs> In fact, everyone gets slow when things get complex. Machines are much faster than humans. They're also much faster at finding statistical complex patterns in big data. Moreover, even when all the information we need for making a decision is right in front of us, we humans are still prone to make bad decisions. It's well documented that humans suffer from bias, 
focus on irrelevant information, and we get tired, hungry, and so on. Now, I can speak from personal experience here, too. Over the last couple of decades, I have marked hundreds of exam essays. And I think I can share this little secret with you. When your exam essay is marked, it is not in your favor if it's done just before lunch, or just after the one written by the class genius, and not if it's the 25th on the same exam topic. But don't worry, you can compensate for this. You just have to phrase things in the same terms that I tend to use. In short, human beings are by no means perfect decision makers. So why not let the machines make the decisions? After all, they have already been shown to beat human experts at spotting skin cancer, finding flaws in legal documents, and of course, at playing chess. I'm sure they could also become pretty good at marking exam essays. So just imagine that we could improve our success rate at preventing children from, children from child mistreatment by 10% by using these systems. Wouldn't that be a fantastic achievement? After all, if we have the tools, wouldn't it be wrong if we didn't use them to save these children or to help them? Why hesitate? That brings us to the second horn of the dilemma. To begin with, consider whether you think it's a privacy problem that the public authorities collect and store information about you. Now, I have to confess, that's not my biggest worry about privacy. Just imagine the hassle of living in a society where they were not permitted to do so. No names, no addresses, no income records. It would, in effect, be the end of governance, you might say. No, the privacy worry that I have is that it strikes me as objectionable if the public authorities repurpose our per personal information to find out other things about us as they see fit. That would amount to a kind of massive predictive surveillance scheme. Now, of course, something like this already takes place in the private sector where companies harvest and repurpose our personal information to target ads and shape our online behavior. But I think it's important that we don't neglect that similar technologies may also be introduced in the public sector. Now, with this threat to privacy also comes a threat to our autonomy our ability to be the source of our own decisions. Having autonomous citizens is important in a democratic society. But in order to develop autonomy, you need some room to find your own sense of self by trial and error, by trying out different ways of life, modes of self-expression, I'm sure you all, like me, did some things in the past that you are happy do not define your future. Haircuts, for instance. Just imagine living in a society in which everything that was on record about you could at any given time be used to risk profile you in order to make important decisions about your life. In such a society, I suspect that we would not feel as free to develop our own identity and sense of self. Your past would haunt you like never before. So what to do? Have you ever used this expression, to err is human? I have. And uh, sometimes when I don't do anything, what I actually do is I look up famous quotes. So, perhaps because I was giving this, going to give this talk, 
I started looking up this quote. It comes from the Roman philosopher Seneca. And when I looked it up, I realized that he continues. He says, but to persist in error out of pride is diabolical. I think this is an important addition. We should recognize that machines can do some things much better than us and take advantage of it. We should not get sentimental about old-fashioned human errors. However, we should not forget that machines are not perfect either. They will be biased if the training data that we use is biased. And they are strict rule followers, so they might miss out on important contextual information sometimes and make mistakes. So now let me end by suggesting how I think we should live with the AI dilemma. Proportionality. We should consider using AI systems case by case. And for each case, we should ask ourselves, is using the AI system proportional to the problem we're trying to solve? Sometimes it might be justified to use a system at odds with privacy and autonomy in order to prevent serious harms to people or society. To many, preventing security threats is one such reason. To prevent terror, for instance. Is it also proportional to use AI to prevent child mistreatment? I am less inclined to say no way now than I was when I started thinking about this. In fact, I think it might be the right thing to do it's if it's our best alternative to avoid child mistreatment. However, appreciating the nature of being in the AI dilemma, we also realize that doing the right thing does not mean that everything is all right. There will be a cost to privacy and autonomy and a leftover of regret. Thank you.